Welcome to part 8 of the Dynamite Piano Tutorial. Since we've already gone through and essentially learned all the different parts of the song, I want to take some time to show you a couple of creative ways to end this song. Now if you're familiar with the song Dynamite by Kyle Cruz, you already know how this song ends. <laughs> I want to show you two different alternative endings that you've never seen before. Now the first alternative I want to show you is very simple. And because this song is played in the key of E major, you could very easily end this song on an E major chord, like this. Okay, now that was so simple that I'm just going to show it to you right now. We already know that this song ends with this part of the chorus. So what I'm suggesting here is that we move up to a B major chord, and then we move it down to the E major chord. So this ending is simple enough, and let me show you exactly what I did. At the end of the standard ending, what we're going to do is we're going to move our left hand up to a double B octave. And our right hand will come down just below middle C, and we're going to play F sharp, B, and D sharp. And then the left hand shoots down to the lowest double E octave notes. And our right hand gets into position to play E, G sharp, B, and E again. Alright, so again that's a B major chord and into the E major chord. And just so that we can bridge the gap, let me play it one last time. And now, here's a quick peek of what this actually looks like on sheet music. Okay, now I want to show you a more interesting and slightly more dramatic way to end this song. And not to be mistaken, this is not part of the original Dynamite song. This is just something I made up, and it's just a suggestion. So, here's the end of the song coming at you again. <laughs> Okay, so obviously this is more of a classical piano ending, and it's in C-sharp minor. So what happens here is that once we leave the traditional ending, we again play the B major chord, and then our left hand has to move up to the C-sharp chord position, and our left little finger has to be on C-sharp, our index finger is on G-sharp, our thumb goes to the upper C sharp. Now our right hand has to immediately move so that our right thumb is on E, right index finger is on G sharp, our middle finger is on C sharp, and our little finger is on E again. Now we strike the upper E note in the right hand while our left hand plays C sharp, G sharp, and C sharp. Now our right hand becomes activated in a smooth rhythm as we then play E, G sharp, C sharp, and E. And now our right hand has become more of an athlete because we're going to need to jump up more than an octave and reach this upper G sharp note with our thumb. Then our index finger has to play this C sharp note. Our middle finger will play E and our right pinky will play this high G-sharp note. Mm -hmm. 
So essentially, our right hand has two different chord positions to get comfortable with in order to play this part smoothly. This is our first right hand chord position played with E, G sharp, C sharp, and E. And this is our second right hand chord position played with G sharp, C sharp, E, and G sharp. And what we want to do is be able to get kind of a rolling motion between the two chord positions. Okay, so if we bring back both hands again, we see that the rolling motion actually begins in the left hand after the right hand strikes that first E note. Okay, so from here, our left hand has to make its way down one octave to reach the lower G-sharp and C-sharp notes, while the right hand has to get ready to play that high C-sharp note, which, well, you can barely see it here on my screen. Um, first, though, we'll strike the low G-sharp note with our left index finger, and then simultaneously we'll play the lowest C-sharp and highest C-sharp notes. <coughs> So this passage altogether sounds like this. Oh, and by the way, it's okay to use your sustain pedal all the way through these notes because it's all the same chord anyway. Uh, so let me play this once again at regular speed so you can see how it should sound. Now, let's see what this looks like on sheet music. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this little invention of mine. As you know, this is not a part of the regular song Dynamite. This is just me putting a little creative spin on the ending. And actually, I've got one more alternative ending I'd like to share with you, so be sure to catch me in part 9 of this video series, because now I'm going to teach you a little known hidden riff that actually exists in the song Dynamite, but you may not have noticed it until now. And it goes like this. Mm -hmm. 